everyone, we will be tackling for this discussion the sample paper presented by Professor Patrick Flores from the University of the Philippines, Philippines. The paper is entitled Everyday Elsewhere, Allegory in Philippine Art. So ultimately in this paper, Professor Flores highlighted the idea on his assessment in Philippine art to particularly point out the exhibited or essentially the normative Philippine modernism or the idea or the contextualized notion of our, uh, modernism in art that existed in the Philippines. So, of course, in this notion, Philippine modernism as defined by Flores actually takes part in a lot of contextual applications based on its social based on the social implications that is presented in society. Ultimately, he devised or defined art not necessarily as something that is perceived by the artist itself, but rather as something that is evidently influencing the artist. So it comes directly from what is dictated from the environment, what is seen, or what is the current political condition that's faced by society. That's the very notion of Professor Flores in terms of how he views art. So ultimately, all of these painted, uh, all of the all of these modernist paintings, he divide, uh, he basically categorized the conceptual interpretations of these paintings based on these three patterns. First things first is the passion. Second is vagrancy. Third one is mass formation. Let me go first to the idea of passion. He defined art that presents passion through the mere genuine uh, through the mere genuineness of how a Filipino is presented as with a liking as how he wants to perceive something like for example his the Filipino fixation on religion the Filipino fixation on study itself and others like that so passion is by far presented by Flores as the simplest form or not necessarily the simplest the primal form rather that is usually exhibited that is usually exhibited in most Filipino art Secondly, of course, is the idea of vagrancy. This actually makes a turning point in which it actually has a it actually has an expositional function. It focuses more on exposition. Why? Because vagrancy tackles more on the topic of abandonment or essentially the social abandonment that is done usually in society. So as defined by as defined by Vladimir as defined by Vladimir in the 1930s, Vladimir Lenin defines that there is an existent social murder wherein there is a direct uh, there is an indirect murder that is usually imposed upon the constituents of a, uh, of a certain state. And in that social murder it is not necessarily the physical murder itself, but rather the economic and political situations that does so. So, essentially, Flores tackles the idea of vagrancy through the exposition on how labor is commodified. Like, for example, one of the most, one of the most highly impression paintings is the painting Itak sa Puso ni Wak Ni Mang Wan. So, this painting is actually a very representation of how uh, of how um, the very commodity of labor itself or how poverty itself is presented as something as demeaning for the human person, demeaning in terms of labor. And essentially labor is treated here as some sort of a design, not necessarily value as something that's focal to the very production of a factory, the very production of a company. So, Flores highlights the idea of vagrancy because he suggests that there is an unconscious or rather, there has already been a breakthrough through the presentation of art that actually imposes the idea of social abandonment, the idea of vagrancy, so to speak. And ultimately, he wants to highlight the idea of mass formation that has happily expressed itself, exhibited itself rather, through modernist art. So in mass formation, it is not really a representation of the singularity because Flores device that 
the singularity is essentially rendered weaker, compa- uh, weaker or essentially rendered as res- essentially rendered as undermining, essentially underdeveloped when compared to the diverse representation of society. This, of course, may come from the very social stratification that's present in society. The peasant, the peasant class, the working class, the petty bourgeoisie, the bourgeoisie itself, etc., etc. So, this divide between the singularity and the diverse society is actually pointed out by Flores as something that needs to be tackled on further. And the only way to meet a certain singular point is, of course, through the development of mass formation. This removes the very tendency of the Filipino to be individualistic. It removes the notion that the Filipino is individualistic. Rather, it holds it also uh, the Filipinos also have the potential to somehow present themselves as a united type of people, as a united people, as a united type of people. So when doing mass form- when doing mass formation, Flores suggests that art already broke through that wall to make the people realize that they actually have this potential of collective unity, which is by far the very notion of mass formation. Collective unity is the major exhibit uh, or is majorly exhibited through these types of art forms. So Flores ultimately uses a type of document that is actually one of the oddest types to be studied upon. So of course, the document that he studied is of course paintings or essentially artworks. Paintings and art forms. So that's what he primarily studied. So how did he narrow down the general collection of paintings into three major categories of fashion, fragrancy, and mass formation. Well, basically it's very simple actually. He he just determined the context. He just determined the context, similarities, and the differences. Or rather, we don't really refer to them as differences. We refer to them as particularities. We don't refer to the differences as differences itself. Rather, we refer to, we refer to them as particularities. Why? Because ultimately, the only way that two things can be different from each other is of course the social conditions that permit them to, be, to appear as such. So of course, Particularities is, politi- is the better politically correct term compared to what is different. Why? Because by defining the particularity, you're also narrowing down and you're also subconsciously going to a deeper discussion on the context of art. So, by studying these elements, Patrick Flores, from the range and the wide collections of art that he actually studied for a certain period of time, he was able to come up with the three major categorizations of art as how it presents an allegorical representation of society itself, which is of course through the notion of passion, through the idea of social vagrancy or essentially social abandonment, and of course, lastly, the tendency and the potential of the Filipino people to mass for uh, to unite essentially to conduct mass formations to view themselves as a collective identity, not necessarily as a singular and individualistic term, but rather as a collective whole. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the very practice of document analysis. We don't necessarily focus more on the letter, rather it relies solely on how you master your understanding of the document based on the very natures of itself, based on the underlying structures that may present themselves in the most conspicuous and inconspicuous way. So, we don't necessarily have to focus on the superficial type of information that's only presented by the naked eye. Rather, we need to go beyond that. We need to acquire this sense of reading 
that actually tackles an even deep, uh, that actually tackles an even deeper discussion based on how we perceive the reading materials that we have. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, document analysis, system presentation, or somehow an attempt to explain the paper of Patrick Flores entitled Everything and Elsewhere, Allegory in Philippine Art. So, if you, if you found this video interesting, leave a like, and of course, share this to those who think they need uh, Share this to those who you think need it. So, ultimately, stay safe and excited. Thank you.